What's up, you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So this channel is completely, like, for the most part, based on how to get into PA school, you know, my journey through PA school, all of the various different nitty-gritty stats, um, GPA, personal statement, all of those things to help you get into PA school. But who really gets into PA school? That is the question that we're going to be answering today. Oh, doing my dance. Hey, I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. Hey, I wonder if you've had time to look into the gap in time slash age between undergrad and PA school applicants. The typical undergrad is 22-ish, but the typical PA student accepted is 25 to 27, depending on the school. Can we discuss? Yes, we can. A video validating the upper 20s people may, ha may help with advice or conversation on the good and bad of taking time between undergrad and PA school. And this is something that people genuinely, like, generally want to know, like, should I take a gap year? You know, like, am I too old for PA school? I've done videos on this in the past. Um, so if you haven't seen any of those videos, kind of just go ahead and look in my search bar and you, you can search for those videos. But th these are questions that we all as pre-PAs would typically have depending on our age, depending on where we're at in this pre-PA journey. But Lauren is absolutely correct. Um, the typical age of somebody graduating from undergrad is like 21, 22. You're graduating around that time. But really when people are starting PA school, the average PA student is about 25. And that there's a lot that goes into consideration with that. But I just want to show it to you like for yourself with your own eyes. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the PAEA program report. So PAEA is the educational body of the physician assistants. They're the ones that do some of our exams and things like that. They help they help kind of like navigate like what PA education should look like. And so they do a report, a school or program report each year, and this is the one from the 2019-2020 um, cycle. And so they actually surveyed about 229 schools, which is roughly like 92 or so percent of the schools that were in um actually like available i think there was there's over like 300 programs but you know 229 is a good sample size and of that is about 10 a little over 10,000 students and so we can actually just do i did the math on that for you all just so you can see so about 10,000 divided by 229 that's about 43 students a program okay and that's i mean i think that's pretty average and my school had 30 students they were wake, working their way up to 45 I think anywhere from like 30 to 45 is the average amount of students that uh, a class, a school will admit for their cohort. There are some schools that admit more and there are schools that admit less, like 25, but that is around the average, okay? And so in that, we have this, this score report here. And I just kind of want to take this down to who exactly kind of gets in, right? So they talk about payment and location and all of those various different things, but let's talk about who gets in. Like, what are the statistics on the actual student, all right? So let me pull this up to you for you guys. So here we are, section four, where it talks about the students. So you have all of these this information here about like what the student will look like in terms of enrollment like how many are first year and versus second year students only um first versus first second and third year students and you're, we're looking at all of these standard deviations and all of that number but i really want to look specifically at um at some of these numbers here in terms of the the capacity and the, the actual demographics of the students, okay? So it talks about who takes what, right? So we have the CASPER test coming up, making its way on this, and there's about 2% of the programs are requiring that. Obviously, that's kicking up, and so if you don't know about CASPER, I will be making a video on that as well. Um, but you see the majority of students, of, the majority of schools are still requiring the GRE. 
and that's 57.7% of programs are still requiring the GRE for admission. So that is something that you really need to think about because with over 300 programs, if you want to make yourself the best applicant or a broad applicant, then you might want to take the GRE, okay? It says the average score is 153 for verbal reasoning and 152 for quantitative. So when and 4.1 for um, analytical. So essentially 153 for, for both. So when you're looking at that, that's 306. So when I tell you, like, I think that you should be shooting for a 305, you know, I'm not wrong in that because for the most part, these are the stats that students are coming in with. You know, schools want you in that 300 bracket. So if you're not hitting that, then you might want to think, okay, do I need to get another study prep? Do I need to do a little bit more? And I really, you guys, you know, I know a lot of you listen to me kind of like a podcast, like while you're driving, you just kind of put my YouTube video on, but I want you to take the time to kind of stop and look at some of these stats that I'm talking about because I want you guys to, I want this to sink in for you all that this is what um, the information is all about, okay? All right, so we're talking about um, patient care experience, healthcare experience, community service, and you see, again, like, between, like, the minimum amount versus the maximum amount. Now, obviously, like, that is, like, huge, 25,000 hours, like, that's a lot, okay? Um, but let's look at what that median or that that um, mid range is, and it's about three thousand for patient care experience, three thousand hours. Now that is a lot, you guys. That's a lot of hours. And so when you're thinking, oh, five hundred, um, you know, or a thousand you you might be a little bit below average. And so you wanna make sure that you're setting yourself up for the opportunity to really get into PA school. You wanna be part of these statistics because you wanna get in. So you have to bump up some of those hours, okay? Now, obviously, this is one of the reasons why the average age of the PA student is 25, um, between your 25 and your 27, because you have to take time to get these hours. You know, you're not gonna be Typically, someone's not gonna come out of undergrad with over 3,000 hours of direct patient care experience. So you're gonna be either taking a year or two to work in the field full time and get some of those hours, or maybe three, um, or maybe four or five for these people that are coming in with 25,000 hours, okay? So let's look at the demographics. Um, I spoke about this a little while ago that the majority of the PA school students are female versus male. It says about 72.2% are female versus the 26.4%, let me just zoom in right there for you, that are male, okay? The, the average is about, seven, the mean is 73.8 versus 26.3, so that's just something that you might want to look into or think about. Um, you know, we have a little bit of an upper hand as females. Like, it's the healthcare is very highly like female driven, especially when it comes to like nursing and and PA school and and NP school. And so, um, fellas, you may have a little bit more ground to cat to cover. But also, you can look at this as a benefit to you because they may need more males in the program, or they want to admit more males because. As a patient, you want to see somebody that looks like you often, you know, like my husband, he wants to go and see like a male doctor or a male PA. Um, although he's fine seeing females, it's just a more of a comfort level. And so that's something that you may be able to use as your advantage, okay? Um, so we're talking about ethnicity here, and this is where, you know, like my heart falls a little bit because um, when you're looking at these percentages of of students in terms of ethnicity, you know, minorities are kind of falling short here. And I think that that's definitely something that we need to address. We need a little bit more diversity, well, a lot more diversity in healthcare in general, but especially in the PA field because that's where I'm at, okay? But for Hispanic, um, Latino or Spanish in origin, it's about 7.6% 
um, non-Hispanic, it's 83.7%, okay? Uh, when you're going now down to where they break it down by race, uh, so American Indian or Alaskan, it's 0.5%, uh, Asian is 9.9%, uh, Black or African American is 3.9%, there are people who identify as multiracial, that's 2.1%, white is 69.4%. Um, Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander is 1.6, and then there are other races or other people who identify as other uh, and or unknown, and they make up about 13.5% um, of the, the student population. Okay, and so again, looking at some of these stats, you may think, oh my gosh, I'm a little bit discouraged because, you know, I, maybe you fall in the 3.9%. Um, it was like 3.4% when I applied. So we're, we're kicking things up a little bit, but maybe you fall in, in, that, in that realm and you're like, man, like my, my chances of getting in are so low. But no, these are things that you can use, again, as your advantage. You use this as a strength. You say, you know what, um, I believe that there should be diversity and that's why I'm here to fill that spot. I really want to um, be there for people in my culture and in my race, uh, be that sounding board for them, be that voice for them that they may not necessarily have with somebody that doesn't look like them. And that is something that you really should keep in mind. Um, these are all things that you want to look at. But here we are with respect to the age, okay? So here we go again. Average age of first year student 25.2%. So the median is 25%. The mean is 25.2. The average age of the youngest um, matriculant is 21.1. Um, and those may be, again, people that come to either direct entry or you're coming in uh, as a bridge program. And then average age of the oldest matriculant is 39.4%. And so that is like really cool and that's key because for my older, my more mature um, individuals that are trying to get into PA school, if you're in your mid to late 20s um, or early 30s, even 40s, you can see that there's a place for you. Um, you know, people are getting into PA school at all ages. The average age is 25, but again, that will probably even kick up. Uh, because, you know, people are using this opportunity to not only get extra healthcare experience hours, but they're turning to the PA profession as a second career, which is what it was meant to be. And so for all of those that you, you may feel a little bit discouraged, please do not feel discouraged because there is absolutely a place for you. Um, if you are trying to get your seat, I really want you guys to do something for me. Please go to get that C university, um, because we are trying to feature, we want to feature PA students, pre PA students that are trying to get their C, um, on our Instagram page. So Go on over to get that C University at, at Instagram. DM us and you'll, you'll give us like a short little bio and a picture because there's a place for you, okay? And we definitely want to be able to tell your story. So again, that these are some good stats. You can go to paea.online.org, um, I believe it is. Um, I'll put it up here for you guys just to make sure that I get it correctly. But where you will be able to see this program report, you can go through and look at the stats, look at GRE scores and all of those various different things that you guys ask me questions on so that you can see exactly where you stand and where you may want to get to to be you know, part of this average student or, or closer to the mean or median average of what's going on with respect to the applicants that are admitted into PA school. Because when you're looking at over 20, 8,000 applicants and um, you know, 10,000 uh, are getting admitted or 8,000 might be getting admitted. You, you want to make sure that you're, you're part of that, that 30 or so percent of students that are going to be getting admitted into PA school. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, hopefully you guys like this information. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Like this video, follow me on Instagram at a down in the PA. Don't forget to DM, get that to university, your body on your picture for a feature and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!